peace and power, a wide frequency, forever eternal. You are the Indian love to Tyrone Street, who got the draft. America must reject the bigotry of Hillary Clinton, who sees communities of color only as votes, not as human beings worthy of a better future. Hillary Clinton would rather provide a job to a refugee from overseas than to give that job to unemployed African-American youth in cities like Detroit who have become refugees in their own country. Own country. Wow. words this is a racial crime if it were happening in right. another country we'd call it ethnic cleansing explain what you mean flint is a majority black city this is, this is a very poor city officially they trying to hurt them I, I, i'm just saying in terms of ethnic cleansing i don't believe there was a want to see conference where they sat around the table right. and said hey what should we do today let's poison flint right but what they did do is they made a decision just like the car companies just like lots of people where they go what's going to cost us more putting the seven dollar part in the car or the losses we're going to get from the accidents it's going to cause. Yeah. This is a cover-up. It's fraud. It's, it's, it's a version of manslaughter now because we have 10 people that have died from Legionnaire's disease, 87 bad. cases. Well, the doctors now are saying, yes, it's connected to this Flint River water. I mean, it's, it's just they could have done, they could have fixed this at any point in time, but once they saw that they made the mistake, I think like a lot of politicians, they figured these people are poor. They didn't vote for us. They don't have any political power. And so, you know, we'll see what we can do. Because his first statements, when this first got revealed, he said, oh, you know, lead is seasonal. That was one of his first lines. Nobody knew what that meant. Mm -hmm. Then he says, well, you get lead from paint, you get lead from this or that or whatever. He tried to cover it up, tried to change the subject. He's, again, here we are sitting still talking about this. Flint doesn't need bottled water sent to it. All right? Mm -hmm. We need those pipes replaced. And not a single pipe has been replaced since they discovered lead in the water. I mean, do y'all think that they just said, oh, oops, there's lead, let's not replace it? Or do y'all actually think they sat around and said, shit, let's poison Flint? But not just Flint, let's poison the Indians. Yeah. <laughs> wakey, wakey. My tribe. We've been patient and waiting. African American youth in cities like Detroit who have become refugees in their own country. Own country, own land. The Negro. The Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. 100 years later. The Negro is still languish in the corners of American society and finds himself in exile in his own land. Own land. What white people in the world, the white box of white supremacy, I hate to say it here, comes from Europe. That's how it got to America. Beneath then, what everyone's reaction to this proposition is, has to be the question of whether or not civilizations can be considered as such equal or whether one civilization has the right to overtake and subjugate and in fact to destroy another. Now what happens when that happens? Leaving aside all the physical facts which one can quote, leaving aside rape or murder, leaving aside the bloody catalog of oppression, which we are in one way too familiar with already. What this does to the subjugated, the most private, the most serious thing this does to the subjugated, is to destroy his sense of reality. It destroys, for example, his, uh, his father's authority over him. 
His father can no longer tell him anything because the past has disappeared. And his father... His father can't tell him nothing because the past has disappeared. Because you lost your kingdom, you forgot you're a king. Because things are out of order, you forgot the greatness of your order and that you were called great. You were called more greater. <laughs> there is gold in your blood, Negro. The has no power in the world. This means, in the case of an American Negro, born in that glittering republic, and in the moment you are born, since you don't know any better, every stick and stone and every face is white, and since you have not yet seen a mirror, you suppose that you are too. It comes as a great shock around the age of five or six or seven, to discover the flag which you have pledged allegiance, along with everybody else, has not pledged allegiance to you. Mm. It comes as a great shock to discover that Gary Cooper killing off the Indians when you were rooting for Gary Cooper, that the Indians were you. Mm. The Indians were you. On your own land. Let's read this. Let's read this. Tyrone Street always got some drop, man. I mean, follow the common chord and vibrate. Get your inner peace, knowing the truth, even the uncomfortable truth, even the poison, even the toxic, toxic nature of reality. All right, let's check this out. It says, in one word, the ultimate violence, which the American white man, like the European white man, has exerted in all unconscious good faith upon the colored races of the earth and above all on the Negro has been to impose on them invented identities, so-called Negro, so-called black, so-called African-American. Titles, meaningless titles and gibberish invented identities to place them in positions of subservience and helplessness, helplessness in which they themselves came to believe only in the identities which had thus been conferred upon them. Black power, identities conferred upon them. Helpless, they became begin to believe only in these identities. That's it. That's all they believe in. Identities. Invented. You have to choose your reality over the invented identity, the illusion that has been conferred upon you, man. Let go. The Americans can give but a little better account of their first original. And indeed, it is no wonder because for want of books, they can relate nothing certain, but only what they have registered in their unusual kikpakamagos, kikpakamagos which is not above 400 years old. Acosta, Acosta, asking what original they judged they were of and from what country and people derived, received no other answer from this indigenous people. They received no other answer when they asked of what country and people do you derive from? What country do you come from is what this Acosta was asking these original people. And what did they say? He received no other answer but that America only was their native country. America only was their native country. America only was their native country. And what is your Americas? Americans. And that they were derived from no other elsewhere. 
So he's asking, man, where do y'all come from? Where do y'all come from, people of America? They answered, America. The Negro has been enslaved on his own land, his own native country. Let the Tyrone Street let go. Gotta love that. Y'all subscribe to Tyrone Street, man. Get that drop. Get that drop. And uh, yeah, you know, I gotta send some special apologies. My um site has not been able to be updated in the last couple of days. They're going through maintenance. I haven't been able to log in to uh, my particular hosting site. So give me a couple of days. I'll be up uploading and, and and you know um you know putting all this great drop that all the community has been doing so you know normally i like to keep it circulating you know very 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 frequently so it's hard it's hard man you know sometimes you go through some static man i'm going through this with y'all but we will prevail you know because we are hitting the goal we are hitting the goal love to all the family love to drop nation it's all good man i'm gonna get it like this but definitely man vibrate Four, three, two to drop, and I'm gonna get all this drop on there real soon, man. But let's get into Uno, man. Uno got the drop. Uno on the beats, getting to the root of it all. This is pretty much gonna be a getting to the root of it all. Uh, you know, sledgehammer upside your head bone, and we're gonna do a, a higher mark dismount as well. So, man, rock with these commandments, man. Thou shalt not have no other god, man. Hold up, hold up. Hola, hola. Man, I love the way this brother put this out there. Right up on your face bone, just like that, man. We're going to get into that geoengineering. Um, so smooth and so trill. So trill. All right? But let go. Thou shalt not have no other God, no other power before your creator. Thou shalt not make unto you no graven images, man. Nothing in the likeness, because you cannot bottle up the energy. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain. What name? If you say Hawa, we're talking about existence itself. Then thou shalt not take existence in vain. That name, that order, do not take your order in vain. Do not take yourself in vain. Keep yourself in order and do not take yourself in vain. Do not take your creator, your existence in vain. Calling yourself whatever you call yourself. Thou shalt not take your existence in vain. Remember to keep your Shabbat, your Sabbath day. Vibrate, vibrate, vibrate. Every time you vibrate, every time you connect, that's a greater tune-up for you and your family. Honor the father and the mother goes without saying. That's just the order. What did he say? Nowadays, people ain't honoring their father because they have no kingdom and they don't respect the position of their father and their mother. And they don't know why they don't respect their father and their mother. Because they have forgotten their place. Thou shalt not kill. Do not slay your brother. Do not commit adultery against your brother. Do not steal from your brother. You should not bear false witness against your neighbor or your brother, man. What they do? Oh, he did such and such to get him jammed up. Anytime you get your brother or your sister jammed up on purpose, man, you are bearing false witness. Thou shalt not covet. All right? You know, I'm trying to, you know, always take somebody else's and, 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 and you know, manipulate their situation so that, you know, you could benefit off of them. And I was going, yeah, man, look, man, don't covet them. Let them rock. Let your people rock. Don't hijack. <laughs> Might as well say, thou shalt not hijack nobody. Stop coveting. Remember, honor your father and your mother. Rock with your Shabbat. Don't bear false witness. Don't steal. Don't commit adultery. Do not commit adultery against who? Not just against your wife or your husband, against your creator. By doing what? Making these false images and putting another God before your God. All of this rocks. All of this weaves. And you only need to tell a community when they are in an animal-like state, an animal-like state, an animal-like state of being. 
Because once you're vibrating, man, this is automatically in your vibration. You don't have to remember all this. This is all how you rock. But to wake up from your animal beast-like state of being. Because we have been reduced to the beast of the field. We will remember. We will get in order. And this separates us from all other nations that have never rocked in this order. You will remember it. They'll try to learn it. And you can teach. You teach all. But you should be remembering, not just learning, but remembering. Uno on the beat. Let go. Geoengineering is real. The poison is real. You read about the Flint, Michigan. We got the Flint, Michigan. What up, everybody? How y'all doing? What about your water? Um, all praise the creator. Kawhi. Hey, hey. Kawhi. Um, Shouts out to all my indigenous truthers, all my people that's out here, you know, trying to find this truth. Um, I'm going to go into this, uh, this, uh, this uh, little gathering or whatever you want to call it with a <laughs> bunch of uh, uh, officials, state officials, and uh, they're speaking on the behalf of uh, chemtrails. And what you're going to find out is that uh, what I didn't know is they use it, using chemtrails for agricultural reasons. You know, like, uh, to, like, uh, mess with the weather for food hmm. to grow crops. Man, they going crazy. I'm going to get right here at that nine minute, man, because we're going to try to get at least a good 20 minutes out of this, man. I'm going to go right here to the nine minute mark. Love to get into the root of it all. Subscribe, man, because this brother is doing nothing but sure fire, sure fire frequency bombs, man. Let go. like to say is that we are in a global drumbeat right at the moment talking about climate change and global warming. One of the things that is affected by climate change is agriculture. But some of what we are seeing is man-made, but man-made in a different way than you may guess. Uh, weather modification programs, experimental ones done by private companies, done by the United States government, uh, done by states across the United States are underway. There's more than 50 of them in operation across the United States. All of these impact agriculture because they change the microclimates needed for agriculture to survive. None of these programs that I know of today, and this is all public record, are available at any time uh, with oversight, agricultural oversight or public oversight. These programs impact agriculture, and there are programs around the world, international corporations are... What you're going to get is if it impacts agriculture, it impacts you. If it impacts your trees, it impacts you. I asked the question, are they... Doing a council to say, let's poison Flint, or are they just saying, um, yeah, I don't want to fix that problem because these people are poor or whatever. When you put all this together, you see a direct attack, a direct attack of aluminum and barium and everything else. You can go into our archives right now in the show archives, get the geoengineering drought. We did a five-hour show. Love to silence Nehemiah and Ra Ra the Great, political Mike, D. Will. We held it down for five hours on this topic. So, man, we've been at y'all, man. So, we're going to get back into that. But, yeah, desiccated blood, barium, aluminum. She's going to admit to the barium, barium and aluminum in the sky, the metal. What happens when they got that metal on you? What are they doing with these auroras and all this? All these are metals. And what happens? You get brain issues and heart issues. And you see the spike of the brain and the heart in relation to the barium and aluminum directly one attacks the brain one attacks the heart directly metal now you got metal in your water and I ask if they been poisoning the Indian if they took you out by poisoning your water and poisoning you are they still poisoning the Indian with no oversight now if she's going to only care about agriculture I need you to care about your tribe and your people and your children Wake up. Modifying our weather all the time. And they're modifying it in ways that cover thousands and thousands of square miles. 
most of it is chemically altered. So that what happens is that we are putting chemicals, ground-based chemicals that are shot into the air, or chemicals coming from airplanes that change and modify our weather. So one of the things that I'm concerned about and that we need to address in the future is how these programs are impacting microclimate needed for our crops to survive and needed for pollination. How many of y'all see this cloud in the sky every fucking day? How many of y'all see this shit? Now, what I, the reason why I'm presenting this information because some people still don't know what this shit is. Some people just go on them every day not knowing that it's fucking chemicals being dropped on them every fucking day. You know what I mean? These fucking people is fucking wild and sick. You know what I mean? Now, when we call them devils, that's exactly what they are. They are spawned from evil devils. So, you know... I just want y'all to know that information, man, because this shit is getting out of hand. And some people still don't fucking know. Um, if we change the growing season, the pollinators may not survive, and also our crops, our flowers, and our tree crops may not get the pollination needed. So one of my areas is looking at this situation to see if we can begin to put under control experimental and other types of weather modification programs. The other issue is... So she's saying, hey, let's get rid of this program where they dropping metals and barium and blood and shit, poisoning the, the Negroes, the Negus, the Antarctic, you know, the indigenous people we want to keep we want to keep doing this shit to them, but I don't think we should do this because it's gonna fuck with us too. That's basically what she's saying. Is that a lot of times we are talking about mitigation for climate change? It's rather an undefined term at this period of time, and so what happens is that many times we're talking about artificially putting chemicals like sulfur or particulates into the atmosphere in what they call geoengineering schemes to reduce um, and, and help the planet, supposedly, but help the planet to not go through such a tremendous global climate change and to mitigate global warming. This shit is fake. Global warming is not real. This is fake. They use that to put the fucking shit in the sky to fucking poison the people so they damn down low won't uh, fucking down low. To 100%. The Lucy shit. The 10%, 20%, 30%, everything you see, they chain, we go upgrade. You know what I mean? They don't want us to upgrade. Man, this shit is all about you, my brothers and sisters. It's all about you. You don't know your capability in this time. That's why they call it the end time, because the end time, the people of the Valley of Dry Bones will start waking the fuck up. And they start getting a natural state, because they start meditating, getting a full download. This shit is not a game, y'all. This shit is it's just serious. This shit's serious, man. You know what I mean? This real spill, like my nigga Drop say. You know what I mean? This real spill. This shit is... Uh, I don't know how to say it. And you know what? Let me get to this point, man, because I already know motherfuckers going to get on bullshit. But check this out. I don't care how you feel about cuss words and all that stuff. This is not. Um, cuss words is fucking English. It's fucking pig Latin anyway. It's just some words that don't mean nothing. You feel what I'm saying? These is made up shit. Are, every, all this language is made up. It's gibberish. So if you get offended by me saying cuss words and all this stuff, listen to the information, man. That's all I want you to do. Understand what this information is about. This is supreme information. This is a caucus person, a person that oppress us, telling them about their people doing shit to them. It's affecting them too. You feel what I'm saying? So stop getting offended so much. That's a problem. Y'all got this Christian mindset. Y'all get offended. People go in my fucking comments, oh man, you could, you know, I really would enjoy it if you wouldn't talk so much like this. I'm not subtle like that, fam. 
I'm being me. This is me. This is my natural state. I'm speaking this fucking gibberish the way I want to speak it. But the information I'm giving is supreme. It's for you to take with you for the rest of your life. To know that these people is evil. I just got to get, you know, I got to get this shit out of me, man. I'm so sick of people going in my comment box, you know, comments telling me stuff about who I am. Don't take me personally. I'm not here to teach you to make you feel good. This shit's supposed to make you mad. Before you get your shit together. Excuse me, y'all. You know what I mean? Y'all gotta understand what's going on. Hey, Mr. Ming. However, the incidence of putting chemicals into our atmosphere is going to change and impact agricultural crop production. And if you take and you put up into our skies chemicals to reduce the amount of sunlight reaching the earth, you are going to begin to reduce crop production. Studies at the University of Illinois on corn crop production show reductions. Without the process of photosynthesis, whereby plants from direct sunlight gain the energy to grow, to produce crops, we are going to find ourselves, if we mitigate in that direction, impacting the crop production, not only here in the United States, but worldwide. One of the things that is impacting crop production right now in the United States and reducing photosynthesis, and also impacting the ability of um, solar power panels to generate the type of, of of power that they should is persistent jet contrails. NASA talks about persistent jet contrails. So, these motherfuckers don't, <laughs> the private companies, this, this, is, this is the crazy part about it is, they don't want you still in getting yourself motherfucking uh, 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 solar panels so all the people that's getting solar panels and shit, they don't want them to use the sun. They don't want them to get that source of energy. So they're going to they gonna say, all right, so we're going to block the sun with these metals. So they ain't going to be able to get this energy to charge their crib up. That Tesla whole ideology. They don't want these people to do it. That's why when you go to any place, these got these fucking monopoly where only one energy uh, company can run everything. This is some bullshit. This is these people putting us under control, too. This is what is affecting the white man, because he's the only one using solar panels, really, basically. You know what I mean? I know how to do all that shit. I know how to install all that. So, uh, you know, I know that these people, really, that use solar panels, they get real-life electricity in their crib. You know what I mean? They getting the full, the full whole setup. You know what I mean? And, uh... I have a friend of mine, his grandfather is like 90 some years old. He uh, built him a solar uh, room and he charged their whole crib up. You know what I mean? They don't even use regular electricity that's from the company. But they sanction them, they give them a still try to find them and shit for that shit. But, you know, these people know that certain places that you live in a cabin or something like that, you don't fucking need nothing but them solar panels. And you're getting all the shit that, all the same setup that everybody else get in the cities. You know what I mean? And they using these fucking chemtrails to kind of block all that shit. As exacerbating global warming because they trap warmth in the atmosphere when they produce cirrus and man-made clouds. NASA also talks to... Another thing, that's saying, they saying that these chemtrails is what's causing the earth to be hotter. You know what I mean? And you already know what's going to happen to people when the shit get hot. You know what people are going to be hiding. And they're going to be like in the movie The Time Machine and living underground. You know what I mean? That's why you go in Colorado, they got the underground tunnels and all that shit. And all across Europe, they got these underground cities. And then you know in South America, they built on top of the, the, the city, uh, Mexico City, so they can live underneath it when shit get fucked up. That's why they build on top of these things. You know, we think it's some, you know, kind of rulership type of thing. No, it's because these motherfuckers want to go high. Remember, they from caves. Because at one time, they ass couldn't come the fuck out. That sun was really fucking hot. 
and we fucking lost the power and start taking the fucking shit, the minerals out of the ground from our each other. That's what that that whole uh, Moors and indigenous thing. That's what we warred about about them taking fucking minerals out of the fucking ground. You feel what I'm saying? They showed these people that these minerals meant shit. We didn't give a fuck. We kept it in the ground because it was our connection. It was our murka, but it was our natural shit. Bang. You know, and I'm not going to get into all that, but I'm just going to continue on. So I apologize for going over the board with that. Let go. Sit down. That when we that these aircraft leaving persistent contrails are changing our climate, and when they change our climate to the degree that one jet can leave a persistent jet contrail, which will spread across our skies, from what this picture up here on my left on the screen looks like, which is a trail left by a jet, that trail can expand to 4,000 kilometers and last for 20 hours. This was unheard of. Did you hear what this lady said? Shit. So it spreads 40 kilometers and it lasts. So you get the, you, they're going back and forth. So you see that little jet stream that we think is like this, it looks small as hell in the sky, where it becomes this big, massive space of cloud after they go through. So that's why you only see them going certain directions. And crisscrossing because it expands, and they creating this fake sky for you. Mm. This is fucking bananas, man. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Y'all don't listen to all the cuss words on man. Listen to what this video and shit, the information that people is bringing to you. Straight up, you know what I mean? They bringing you live information on how these people was trying to fuck over us. You feel what I'm saying? And this not a this not an individual people thing. This is everybody. This shit is affecting everybody, but surely it's supposed to affect the melanated person because they don't want us to upgrade. You know what I mean? And I'm going to give y'all that information at some other time. You know what I mean? Because if they're blocking out the sun, then they're blocking out your energy. And they don't want you to upgrade. You've seen them uh, joints, uh, you know, you can check out uh, who's that. Showing all the plasma coming off the sun. Uh, could be BPR for watch or WSO. Uh, Steve Olson report, one of those people. But, you know, they, they got, you know, these straight up, <laughs> you know, plasma beams coming off the sun, hitting the earth, energizing the earth in different you know areas, people catching different things. All kinds of stuff is being caught right now, man. You know what I mean? So it's all about the upgrade. It's all about the upgrade. But they can't stop it. They can just slow it. But maybe that's why the Mosai has to speed up days and times. Because they will be slowing down the upgrade. So no matter if they slow down the upgrade or not. If the Mosai speeds up days and times. The upgrade is right on time. In the early 60s and the 70s. And it wasn't until the late 1980s that there was a change and we started to have persistent jet contrails that persist. NASA studies show that part of our global warming problem could be attributed to these types of contrails and the jets that leave them. Kim so one of the issues as we go through... She can't keep saying that we're doing chemical shit and then keep calling them contrails. Well, if they're chemicals, then they're chemical trails. They're chemtrails. But clearly, she's more concerned about the agriculture than the people, the children, the brain cancer and brain disease and heart disease caused by these aluminum, barium, and yes, desiccated blood cells. Look it up. Is how do you like your skies, natural or man-made? And right now, we are making man-made clouds, and wow. this is trapping warmth in our atmosphere. Wow. The climate change that is produced by these jets, not all jets, mostly some non-commercial, but what happens to our skies is that we start to see the changes. The man-made clouds do trap the warmth, and they increase the humidity. This allows for pests to proliferate, diseases, molds, mildews, funguses, and viruses. This is their global warming. Not no CO2, all the buses and trucks. 
They're trapping the warmth with these fake ass clouds. Man, it was cold as hell, and then all of all this all of a sudden today it was hot as a mug. I'm sweating in the car, and then it gets cold again. I mean, it felt like somebody just heated me up in some type of fish bowl. Further proof that there must be some type of barrier that they're bouncing off of in order to heat up the planet. Heat up the plane. <laughs> planet is plane. Planet is flat. But we'll get back into this global warming. Anything where you see global is a straight up, you know, no, no. It's letting you know that someone is, uh, you know, giving you an illusion, an illusionary warming. Every time I see global, I just say illusion. Global illusion. The global society, illusionary society of you know, global warming. It's fake ass warming. Trapping warmth with fake clouds. Man-made clouds. This is a man-made cloud, ladies and gentlemen. And these pictures... Y'all get it now? Bang. Man-made motherfucking clouds. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Assimilation of your reality. They're creating your reality for you. You should do everything mm. in meditation and learn that this is not your reality. Mm. They're creating this shit for you. Dang. Soon, soon, they're going to put a motherfucking hologram in the sky and tell everybody it's fucking Jesus. Project Blue Bean. Watch what I say. And everybody that believe in Jesus is going to believe that was fucking Jesus in the sky. And all hell won't break loose. Feel me? Because they're going to think it's an end time and it's a wrong. They, these people are creating this setting. These Jewish people. This think about it. They're putting metals and metals. They're not just doing experiments. They're literally terraforming, creating a, like a silk screen, like a projector, a projector. With all these ions and, and, and metals in the sky, it is forming a projector where they can bounce off of this situation, electricity, electrically make it happen. These auroras are man-made spectacles. People are seeing all kinds of spectacles all over the place. Are they man-made? Well, we're going to get the drop. <laughs> and the drop will be pure water. But if you know, then you don't have to fall victim to this oh let's you know the world is ending let's fight against the ETs all your movies like Transformers these ETs we all must now know that we're earthlings and that we come together for earth now they want you to fight on their side against your energy your vibration coming to free you <laughs> all these movies about you joining up with them to help them fight against your creator come on man all oh, the energy is real love to the brother getting to the root let's get some more of this man let's get some more of this man before we get into another one of his drops on this antarctica it's going to be a couple minutes because all this connects you know as the brother's mentioning man and then we're going to get into a book that the brother dropped on us that's you know fire power connecting all of this indigenous uh, you know, saying Jewish, like he said, Israelite and Indian, Indio, right here in America. Cooperated, cooperated, man, with researcher after researcher after researcher. Artifacts, let's go. This whole system is built on them. They don't want financing all this shit. NASA and all that, they doing this shit. They control the military and all that shit. So, you know what I mean? They're they're creating this shit so they can take control of us. You know what I mean? They're using all these fake clouds and all this shit to fucking fuck with the agriculture. As y'all seen in the video with the Antarctica, they fucking living on the island of Antarctica. Antarctica, man. I mean, like I said, that's just so right on time that I think we just need to go catch that right quick. Love to the brother getting to the root. Y'all check out the rest of this uh, geoengineering artificial clouds, man. We might have to get some more because she's about to even, I mean, she go deep, man. We got a lot to cover, man, but y'all get the rest of that, man. You know, but let's go into some more getting to the root. Again, y'all go subscribe, man. Show the brother your love and appreciation. Show it to all the families taking the time, man, away from their families, their wives, man, they 
their hobbies, whatever they're doing, to do something completely new that no one thought that that they were capable of doing, man, as far as just teaching and bonding with folks that's truly thinking on another curve, that's truly surfing on another wave, you know, so it's a real, it's a real thing, so, you know, support us, you know, support the fam, keep uh, supporting GoFundMe, keep supporting all that, because this is what you're building for yourself, no matter what else you're planning on doing, you know, you're doing it for yourself, so, let's keep it going, let's keep it going, hold on, man, you know, let's see if we can get it, my internet's doing a little reload, hold up right quick, be patient with me, man, Man, like I said, these uh these jam up Jones is a, is a great opportunity, man, just to take a breath. Wow, wow, and just know that static free is not a option for us. It is, you know, a lifestyle for us being static free. Being static free is our lifestyle. It is not a hobby for us. It is our lifestyle, straight up. We are hijack free, man, by birthright. So everybody trying to hijack us, making confederacies. <laughs> Don't you understand? Don't you comprehend? We are hijack free by birthright. By birth, man. This brother got some wonderful drop going on. We just got to get this Antarctica. This is one minute and 42 seconds, man. Let's go. hundreds of air hours mapped the 4,000 mile sunset coast, made the amazing discovery of warm land in Antarctica. <laughs> the universal white is turned to chocolate brown dotted with blue. A cameraman goes into action. 300 square miles of land without snow. Land that might be in New Mexico or Arizona. Mexico or Arizona. Pictures alone will prove Bunger has discovered a warm Warm oasis, Antarctica. Well, if Antarctica is not just a little speck on the bottom of a globe, <laughs> but it's a it's surrounding, you know, in such a capacity that they have to do a operation high jump to get over the walls. A high jump to get over the walls into more land. Get that drop. Then they're discovering more land. Warm oasis is more land. It's not just, oh, here's a pocket on this little speck of ice of, of warm oasis. They're saying that there's more warm land beyond this wall of ice that they are mapping out. Now, didn't Admiral Byrd say the same thing? And all the minerals and uranium and gold and everything else that's over here, people. And how many more of these pockets of land? You know, we got that, but let go. Warm oasis in the shadow of the pool. The astounding, undreamed of fact is that they are over a chain of warm water lakes whose shores, except for small patches, are... A chain? A whole chain of warm water lakes? Let's go. Free of ice and snow. Commander Bunger circles the largest lake in sight, five <coughs> miles long. He comes in to make a landing. Water temperatures must be recorded. Sample is taken. He finds the water fresh. Temperature 38 degrees Fahrenheit. Fresh, warm water. On the shores are vast deposits of coal and of minerals of the utmost importance. Minerals of the utmost importance. How many minerals of the utmost importance can you... Cities of gold, cities of gold, huh? Minerals of the utmost importance. Coal, yeah, okay. Now they're finding fresh water, so that means it's just like the Orinoco flow. <laughs> it's all connected to this terrestrial paradise. Now they were getting there to this particular portion of Antarctica from the southern tip of South America. 
that Orinoco River that Columbus said connected to the terrestrial paradise. Now they got more fresh water, warm water, warm land. It don't matter what you, you know, have concluded your environment to be or your habitat to be. You at least need to know it's worth researching, people. If your ancestors and your ancient ones all knew they were firm, fixed, and immovable, and then something happened around the 16th century to change it, now you have a globe in every classroom. You have to at least question it, man. Did my ancestors have the drop or did they not? And if they had the drop based on the technologies and the artifacts and everything you know is unexplainable, then I'm sure they knew if they were spinning on a ball or not. I mean, if they had flying machines and all kinds of things, right? Put it together and use your senses. If you don't feel like you're spinning, it's because you're not. And there's more land beyond the pole. This is incredible. They found decades ago a warm place on Antarctica. Wow. Look at all that water. Look at all that warm, fresh water. Oasis, they say. Love to oh no. Man, on that note, man, let's just keep it going. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to cue this back because I know I'm going to get some more drop out of a few of these joints. And uh, I want to get going, man, to this great PDF that I will leave in the links. Click on the links below. Yeah, man, we're going to actually get into that uh, higher mark, man. Make a dismount. I'm going to cue it up right now. I already know where I'm going, man. This is amazing drop. This is two hours long. Y'all check it out. You know what I'm saying? The brother... It's long-winded like me, I guess, you know what I'm saying? We we got a lot to say here, man. You know, so much connecting, so, you know, forgive us, but we just rocking it, man. You know what I'm saying? We just uh, rocking by baby, you know? Putting this baby to sleep, baby, while we wake your ass up. Yeah, we're going to go right here into the uh, hour and 36. I already know that. We're going to ride it all the way out. Such a tremendous dismount. I just wanted to take it, you know, take this dismount with my brother, Cause this, you know, this last uh, 30 minutes or so and, and the whole drop, man, so much to get out of this. So take your time, get out your notepad, sit in the classroom with a brother, I Mark, as he digs and uh, uncovers so much of this greatness, man. All right. All right. All right. So we're going to keep a cue right there. We're going to keep a cue for our dismount. All right. And uh, yeah, let's get to it, man. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right quick. Before you set trip right quick, you know. Let's get into the calm zone. Yo, love to all the family, man. All the schools, all the, uh, you know, learning facilities. You know what I'm saying? Everyone who's rocking. Everyone who's getting, uh, you know, a good trial run right now. We're giving out all these trial runs to, uh, you know, whether it's uh, development centers, uh, uh, high schools, elementary schools, charter schools, everything in between. This is something that we are creating as a service to our community, you know, promoting that vibration to vibration awareness, you know, um, tuning our family up, you know, uh, restructuring, reestablishing our energy grid of this 432. We got this calm zone, this learn and vibe frequency of learning, addressing behavior in classrooms, calming our children down, relaxing them instead of being sent out the classroom. You put, you know, what I'm saying uh, a little. Little Joseph in the corner, man, you put these headphones on him. You say, hey, man, choose your relaxing uh, vibe playlist, man. Man, you want some classical, man. You want some guitar. You want some harp. You want some spirit and drum music, man. You want some uh, some nice little zen garden. Put them in the jazz suite. A nice little easy flow, you know, different contemporary, you know, joint. You know, different songs, man. You, you might get some Phil Collins or something in there, man, you know. Something cool, man. Some, some Hendrix or something, man. Yeah, man, put them in there, you know, give them a nice little flow. You might just put them in the, uh, but let's get a little Zen Garden going on. Let's get a little Zen Garden. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll get a little Zen Garden. You know, he does this while he, uh, he or she, 
you know, maybe plays a little Simon Says, you know, a little memory, brain activation, you know, for 10 minutes, uh, you know, plays these little fun games, man, where, you know, destroy balls by forming pairs, add up, add up to 10, so, all right, how we do that, how we do that, all right, four, I gotta hit the four on the six, bang, I gotta hit the two, I got. I need. A, I need an eight. I need an eight. Bang! I got five. I gotta hit that five. Bang! I got a nine. I gotta hit that one. Bang! You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about. So you might do some stuff like that, man. You gotta multiply. A little multiplication. This is my daughter's favorite one, man. My daughter and the son loves this, man. She says, "Daddy, you know, I just wanna draw." I just want to do my thing, you know. I don't even know what I'm drawing, man. I'm just doing something cool. I guess it's like an arrowhead. This is my arrowhead, man. I'm gonna do a, all right, I'm pretty bad at drawing. But y'all know what I mean. You know. All right, all right. I suck at drawing. All right. Plus, my computer got a delay on it. Yeah, it's my computer's, my, my computer's trip. <laughs> but then you can hit a replay, you know what I mean? And say, oh, and then you got a replay, you know what I mean? You know, stuff like that. Do a little hangman, a little jewel quest, a little word search. Hey, Flashman, Pac-Man, anybody? While you listen to some harps and some uh, zen or jazz? I mean, I know y'all ain't trying to see me, you know, uh, no speed, man. I know y'all ain't trying to get down with none of this speed, man. All right, man, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, let's go. All right, all right. Whoa. All right, man. I got you. Yeah. Y'all get it, y'all get it. I'm whooping his ass. But, you know. Do a little Tetris, man. A little flower power. You know, so that's just a little preview of what uh, I've been building on the side, man. Uh, getting it going to the community, the local community out here in LA, Inglewood, everywhere in between, man. We're gonna spread this vibration coast to coast, frequency to frequency. Let me reboot it. And that's the frequency of learning, man. So, uh, yeah, pretty soon I have much more information on how to get this to a school near you, how you can uh, join our team, man, and uh, get this out. You know, get these uh, out to the communities near you, man. Make that easy flow, independent. And, uh, yeah, you know, we'll just keep it flowing, man. Let's see, what suite do we want to get into, y'all, as we get into this, man? Y'all want to get back into them drums, man? Y'all want to get some jazz going? Let's see, let's see. A little harp music, a little flu. I might be feeling the Spanish guitar because we're about to get into the moraine. No. The moraine. The moraine. We're going to get into Sevilla, Spain. So I think it's only fitting, man, that we uh, hit up the Spanish guitar a little bit. So, let it go. Go, let go. All right. My computer's slow today, man. Still loading up. Let's go. Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. Let's get into it. Love again to get into the root of it all. For all the great drop in the PDFs, the brother has uh, dedicated to the library, man. So much love to let us find the truth for that as well. 
and everybody, man, so many other great researchers and scholars in this with PDFs. But this one right here, man. It's always interesting when they put a little uh, note in it. You know, someone puts a little note to somebody else and says, a good book. Whatever name this is, Heteracy or uh, 1906. So in 1906, someone said, hey, man, this is a good book. Now, what does it mean it's a good book? Is that a code word for something? A lot of times when they did this, this was a code word to say, hey, <laughs> hide this shit. <laughs> hide this shit. All right, man, let's get to a little bit of this uh, preface, man. Again, this is... Christopher Columbus and the Participation of the Jews in the Spanish and Portuguese Discoveries by Dr. M. Caserly, 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 right. published in 1894, people, 1894, you know how much was going on in 1894, all right, let's go ahead and get it. I mean, we're just talking about America. We're just talking about the so-called Negro. Man, this is an interesting part to pick it up right here. It says, we're in the preface, all right? I'm in uh, page 14 of the PDF. It only remains for me to add a few words. A few words of explanation regarding the Moreno. The Morenos, or secret Jews and their status. You know, it's so interesting as it says in the Dumb Night Verses 1452, man, conquer these Saracens and pagans, but Saracens, and they go to war against the Israelites in Spain and Europe while going to war against the Israelites in the Indies and the Americas. Columbus knew when he got here to the Orinoco in the South America that he was flowing with Eden. Oh, Columbus knew Christopher Columbus was keenly interested in finding the Lost Garden of Eden, remember? And Columbus believed he was close to rediscovering Eden when? This is Columbus's copious marginal notes demonstrate his abiding interest in mapping the location of the garden or the Lost Garden of Eden when he stumbled onto the island of Hispaniola. He was mapping out Eden when he got to Haiti. Now there's a lot that plays about Columbus around this Cuba and Haiti and he was looking for the great Khan, remember? The great Khan, even when he got to Cuba he was looking for the great Khan, get that? In that Preston John series. Now, when he got to this Haiti or Hispaniola, Columbus believed he was close to rediscovering Eden. A brief reinforced, a belief reinforced by the strength of the Orinoco River. I have never heard or read, I have never read or heard of so great a quantity of fresh water. We just got that fresh water from the Antarctica and the fresh water, right? So Columbus is seeing this Orinoco River, this Garden of Eden. He's seeing this connection here in South America, here in Hispaniola, here in Cuba. I have never read or heard of so great a quantity of fresh water. So coming into the near, so coming into and near the salt. So you got this fresh water coming near the salt water. He's never heard of such great quantity of fresh water. He wrote to Spain's King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. And the very mild climate also supports this view. And if it does not come from there, from paradise, from paradise, Eden, paradise. So if, it, if, if this flow coming out of this, this river, this fresh water here in Hispaniola, if it does not come from there from paradise it seems to be still a great marvel for i do not believe there is known in the world a river so great and so deep 
You know, we got this before and I said, you know, Columbus is a worldwide traveler. And he said that this Orinoco River is so great, so deep that there is not, that there is known, he does not believe there is known in the world a river so great, so deep. Then what he's finding right here, people, when he's connecting it to Eden, not me, not me, Columbo. Cristobal, the Christ bearer. Columbus's belief that he was near the earthly paradise is evident in his first letter to the Spanish monarchs. He notes the paradisical beauty of the islands, the mildness of the climate, the abundance of food, the innocent charm of the natives, and the richness of the island's natural resources and language, suggesting that he believed himself close to the earthly paradise and I say Cusco means navel of the earth Cusco Peru Peru Salam so you know we're talking about the Orinoco and again we got this uh, drop here that was great you know connecting this Mount Roraima this mountain right here Mount Rarema, take it in, take in the majesty of this mountain, which is a what? A tree. A tree stump, a giant tree stump. We call them flat mountains, but come on, man. It was sliced and cut by something a while back. Is it play play? Now, according to this uh, particular, you know, researcher breaking it down that the Orinoco River that Columbus just said flowed out of paradise, right? Uh, that Columbus said at this quantity of fresh water so coming in near the salt, the strength of the Orinoco River and the very mild climate also support this view if it does not come from there from paradise. Eden. Columbus was keenly interested in finding the lost garden of Eden. To terrestrial paradise.